Hi, in this video I want to talk about using Langchain in production. Most of the videos you will find out there will be about the library itself, but not what it takes to create a production ready application. This is what a typical Langchain application looks like, at least as far as I have seen. Many examples use a frontend library like Flask or Streamlit that holds a conversation with memory and uses some kind of vector database to retrieve documents. Often you see high level chains like this, for example, the conversational retrieval QA chain, which directly takes in a retriever and also memory. The whole application is running on a single server and for prototyping, this is perfectly fine. But for an application that many users may use and you are working on a team, for example, this might not be the greatest solution. An established standard for enterprise applications is the microservice architecture. You take the logical parts out of a monolithical application and create single applications for each part. For a chatbot application, that might be a front end, a service for storing and holding conversations, a service for making requests to OpenAI and sending that back. And also you don't want to store everything in memory, which might blow up your service at some point. So you want to store your conversations in a database. A very good solution for this is Redis. It's very performant and easy to use. If you've got your own knowledge base, you will want to use another database for your embeddings. I like PG Vector, but of course you can also use other databases like Pinecone or BV8. So now you've got five different services, but they don't talk to each other yet. The data flow looks as follows. You got your front end, you type something in the UI and then make a post request to service two. Service two retrieves and stores the conversation and makes another request to service three. Service three makes a request to OpenAI and returns the answer back to service two. Service two now stores the updated conversation and sends back the whole new conversation to the front end. This is the data flow and very important, the front end should never communicate with the database directly. Okay, now we've got five services, but that's really hard to deploy, isn't it? No, modern services uses container. Most of the time it will be Docker. So each of the service gets its own operating system, resources and environment. When working with containers, you also want some kind of orchestrator, which starts, stops and maintains the applications in a healthy state. Most enterprises use Kubernetes to do this. Locally or just for small applications, you can also use Docker Compose the orchestrator since it's easier to set up and use and it also runs on a single server. Okay, that's how I would approach the architecture of a modern chat application. Okay, after the architecture, I also want to take a look at the code perspective and I've also got some rule of thumb for working with Langchain. The first one, if you leave the prototyping stage, don't use memory, but always use some kind of database to store conversations. Second, use low level chains and control everything by yourself instead of using high level chains like a conversational retrieval Q&A chain, which is hard to customize and it's kind of hard to change the interface if you want to. One example, you can't integrate the conversational retrieval chain with Redis. The third point is to use a vector store that allows hybrid search. But what is hybrid search and why would you use it? Let's say we want to build a chatbot for an automotive manufacturer and the manufacturer has got multiple handbooks for different cars. So if a user now asks what happens if I press the red button, the user might get too much information or maybe just the wrong information. So with hybrid search, you can now pre-filter the data set. For example, if you know that the user bought model A, then you can filter for model A and get back the handbook for the model the user actually bought. So if you want to scale your application, always think about hybrid search. Okay, I'm now at VS Code and I want to walk you through the code in high level. You don't have to understand everything bit by bit, but just get the idea behind it. So we've got multiple folders here. And the first one I want to show you is the front-end application. This is a React application. So if you enter it here, we can see everything is built in the app.jsx. This is of course not a perfectly valid setup because normally we want to split the application multiple components. But since it's a small application, I think this is fine. And the most important part here is actually happening here. So if we want to press a button, we've got this function handle submit, and this creates the conversation and makes a post request with the fetch API to service two. It will create a conversation ID and pass it to this service two endpoint. So as you can see, we make a post request and we um, post it as application JSON. And as the body, we post the whole conversation, which has this kind of style. This is a, an object here with a role and the content this is the way the OpenAI API expects it. So now after getting the data 
from the post request here, we're gonna work with it inside the service tool. Here we've got our app.py and in the app.py, we first will create a connection to Redis, which we set up in a um, other Docker container and we've got two endpoints, one post endpoint service tool and it takes the conversation ID as path parameter so we've got the get endpoint and we've got a post endpoint. The get endpoint is to retrieve the initial conversation and send it back to the front end. And this takes the conversation and tries to retrieve it. Here we make a request to Reddit and try to get the conversation by the conversation ID. So if it exists, we will convert it from JSON to a Python dictionary and then append a system message here. And at the end, we will send the whole conversation to another service, service three, we make another post request here and we wait what we get back from the response here. So, so service three will make a request to OpenAI and send back the new reply from OpenAI. So this will be stored in the assistant message and this will be appended with role assistant and content to the whole conversation. We will store it with the set method with the current conversation idea and store it now as updated version here in Redis. And now at the end, we will just return the conversation. But let's look at this, what happens actually here. So we take a look at server three and here we can see we've got another endpoint and this is done now with the LangChain. Here we can see we import LangChain at the top and we also open some database interfaces like PG Vector, and we also import AI message, human message and system message. And most of you who already worked with LangChain know this. And we've got a prompt template to actually give the bot some kind of identity. We get a connection string to the vector database, Psycho PG2 here, and this is um, Postgres. PG Vector is just an extension of Postgres. We store it in a collection name called VectorDB, and then we set up a contract for service two and service three. So this contract or models, how it's called in Pydentic, tells the API which way the body should be structured to actually uh, make it work. So now here we take uh, the store, make it a retriever, and now we've got our setup here. We've got our prompt template. Here we say as an FAQ bot for a restaurant, you have the following information for a restaurant. We give it the context. The context is the information which we retrieve from the vector store. Then we create a system message prompt. And here we also define some helper functions to actually make it look nice in the final prompt. Okay, now let's look uh, at the actual endpoint. We can see we've got also this conversation ID. This gets passed from the front end to the second service to the third service. And now we get the latest message here. This is the new question which was typed in in the front end. And we want to retrieve the relevant documents from the vector store. And these are the docs, we format the docs. So we don't get the class names, but we just want to have text. So we retrieve it here and as you can see, here we get the meta metadata and just uh, join it in a new line so we only get the text back. Okay, at the end, we will just create a final prompt. This is the uh, prompt we created here with our system message and we take in the context here and then we send it here um, as whole conversation to the chat endpoint. We just use the chat functionality here. So in this application, we use chat open AI. It takes a list of messages and we get back a response here. And, and we send back the content of the result, which will be the new AI message. And again, the result of service three will be used in service two. This is the result of service three. And now we send everything back to the front end. Okay, this is the logic. And now we want to create our Docker files to make a container. We just use a base image here, Python 3.10 and now we install our dependencies and use UV icon as entry point for our application. So we run it here on port 80. We map the port outside uh, to port 8000 and for the other application on port 5000. So internally in the container we use port 80, but outside we use port 5000. So this will be done for every application. We have three Docker files for the front end and we've got also two Docker files for the back end. And for the databases, we don't need a single Docker file because we just download it here from Docker Hub. So this is actually another advantage because we don't have to install Redis and Postgres on our local machine, but we can just download it 
from Docker Hub and use it directly. So this is the way it looks like. This is our orchestrator. To run the applications on your own machine, if you have Docker, you can just type docker compose up minus minus build. This will download now the images from Docker Hub and also build the images with the local uh, stored Docker files. And if everything works, for you it might take a little bit longer because you actually have to download the images first. You won't have it in the cache. But if everything is started up correctly, so we've got no errors here, you can just visit localhost port 3000 where the front end is running and take a look if the chatbot works as expected. Okay, so before we can actually use the database, we first have to run a function here. And this is called python insert data.py. What is happening here? We first create an instance of the OpenAI embeddings and loop through all of the directories via the directory loader. We load the documents in this FAQ folder, make a, a splitting with a chunk size of 1000. We can make, make it a little bit smaller, let's say 250. And then we store the documents uh, in the vector store. So this is be done uh, with this function. And now we can see this is done, three of three files. And now we can take a look here. And we should now be able to ask when does the resto run open on Sunday. Okay, we get an answer. Not sure if this is 100% correct. I guess on Sunday it might not be correct, but in general, it's more about the microservice architecture in general. So if you want to improve it, you may take a little bit more time to improve the prompt. But in general, as you can see, this works. We've got five microservices. All are in isolated containers and orchestrated via Docker Compose. Okay, that's it. Let me know in the comments what you think about this architecture. And if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video, of course.